Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY video here about good old Athena. I spent some time earlier this week figuring out the uh, kitchen island, so uh, come inside and I'll show you. This green foam box represents said kitchen island. This is where our freezer and fridge is going to be located, and it also serves the very important function of supporting your butt when you're working in the galley while underway. Before I can start building the kitchen island, I need to get the diesel tank that's gonna sit here in the center of the boat in place first. And that is why I've made this little mock-up. My original plan was to build a custom aluminum tank that would sit in this entire area in here, but I have changed my mind. With the custom designed aluminum diesel tank under the cabin sole, I would get roughly 170 liters worth of tankage, but it turns out I can get a plastic tank, off the shelf plastic tank, that'll fit inside of this kitchen island and only extend up about this far into the kitchen island, and that'll give me 215 liters worth of tankage. The aluminum tank would have filled up all of this area down here, preventing us from getting access to the area down here. The plastic tank is just gonna sit inside of the kitchen island, so we can put in a little access hatch here and still get into this area. I've already ordered the tank, that should show up in a few days, and I've also ordered the stainless steel. I need to build a frame to support the tank and secure it, and also to secure the kitchen island, because there's gonna be quite a lot of weight put on this, so I need this to be very secure. The bolts for securing the stainless steel galley pole that's gonna go here should show up in a couple of days too, so hopefully this week I can get that installed and get the hole here in the cabin sole all patched up. Also on the list of stuff that's hopefully showing up in the next couple of days are the last few doohickeys to hook the itty bitty Perkins up to the alternator and finish my DIY diesel generator. Yesterday, after I finished shooting the first two minutes of this video, I took care of some work off camera. For instance, I patched up all of the remaining port lights in the hull. There was the one in the galley you guys just saw, there's the one here over the settee, one in the forward cabin, and the last one in the old forward head. I used the exact same process I did for the two most aft port lights in last week's video. If you want to see how that was done, I'll pop out one of those YouTube cards for that video. Almost all of the old port lights were leaking, so I had to do something. I could either order new one of these or glass over the holes and find some off the shelves ones because these are custom designed port lights and to get these there's a little bit of lead time involved. When I ordered the port lights for the cabin top which is the same type it took just shy of two months for them to show up and in the event that we damaged the port lights in the hull it would be really nice to be able to swap them out quick. Long story short I'll start hunting for some new port lights for the hull Hopefully I can find something that kind of matches this shape so they don't look too much out of place. Yesterday I also cleared out the aft cabin. There was a bunch of junk in there including an old water heater, some old insulation, a bunch of stuff that just needed to go. I'm gonna leave the aft cabin looking like this. Not permanently, of course, but just until Athena is back in the water. Depending on how Athena sits in the water when she goes back in, I might want to put the batteries, the isolation transformer, and the inverter charger here in the aft cabin instead of over on the starboard side of the boat in the technical compartment. So that's why I'm going to leave the aft cabin looking like this until Athena is back in the water. I also made some limber holes down here so that any water or, God forbid, diesel that ends up down here can actually drain to the bilge instead of just pooling up down here. I'm really hoping the new tank and the stainless steel for the frame is going to show up before the weekend. So I'm crossing my fingers and really hoping for that. Why don't we go ahead and get all of this cleaned, primed and painted. I've finally got all the parts for my little DIY generator, so I should be able to take this guy for a spin this weekend. Oh yeah, and of course I also finished painting the itty bitty Perkins. The parts I was waiting for were primarily these two table locks here and also this doohickey here. 
although he started out life looking a little bit different. After a quick trip to the dentist for some teeth removal, it was on to Mr. Milling Machine. Martin helped me use the DRO to precisely mark the locations for some holes. Why all of this work? Well, because I need some way of attaching this pulley wheel to the engine. In last week's video, I built this for actually attaching the alternator to the engine. All I need to do to finish this is just to figure out the alignment of this plate here and also to mount the heat exchanger. Annoyingly, to be able to do that, I need to assemble everything, figure out the alignment, pull everything apart again, drill the holes in the plate, weld the plate in place, and then I can do the final assembly. The plan is to mount the heat exchanger somewhere right around here. So I'll just grab some quick measurements off of this guy and we can get to drilling. I don't have the right length of bolts to actually mount this thing now, but it's okay. I just wanted to make sure I drilled the holes before welding the plate in place. So if you just use your imagination to subtract a little bit from the length of these, this is what the heat exchanger is going to look like. This looks reasonably close. Let's go ahead and get the plate welded in place. I'll just tag the plate in place, flip him over and take care of all the welding because uh, there is no way I am skilled enough to do the welding in here. she is, the finished DIY generator. I think she looks pretty good, but as you might be able to hear by the sound of my voice, I'm not super excited. That's because I'm a little bit nervous and a little bit frustrated. When I was fiddling about with this thing a little earlier, I noticed in here that it says Perkins 102. That's pretty odd for something that's supposed to be a 402. Cement boat guy said that the guy he bought the Eddie Betty Perkins from said that it outputs 10.6 kilowatts at 3600 RPM, which would correspond to a 402. But in case this is only a 102, I'm looking at 6.7 kilowatts at 3600 RPM. That might not sound like an important fact, but with the 402, I think realistically I was looking at somewhere around 6.5 to 7 kilowatts of usable energy from the generator. In case this is actually a 102, well then I'm probably looking at something like 4.5 maybe four kilowatts if it's really bad. If the Itty Bitty Perkins turns out to be a 102, I could easily have gone with an alternator half the size of this one. That would have been smaller, lighter, and cheaper. It just really sucks to put a lot of time and effort into something and then get a surprise like that. But uh, we'll uh, find out tomorrow. Hopefully I can do a little bit of a load test and uh, well, then we'll see what's up. It's the next morning. I am waiting for the hardware store to open so I can pick up a big bucket or something to circulate cooling water. Now, please understand that I'm not pointing fingers here, or at least if I am, I'm pointing a lot of those fingers at myself. I mean, sure, Martin believed the guy he bought the engine from when he said that it had a 10.6 kilowatt output, and I believed Martin. In reality, if any of us had just actually checked the freaking engine, we wouldn't be in this weird situation. If the engine is in fact a 102, the annoying thing is not so much that I end up with an overdimensioned alternator. Sure, that's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. The frustrating thing is that with a power output of 4, 4.5 kilowatts, that severely limits the amount of things we can run simultaneously aboard Athena. There are some different options. I can bump up the size of the inverter and rely more on that rather than the generator. I'll still have to run the generator because power is not just magically going to appear in the battery bank. Um, you could also run the Itty Bitty Perkins at higher RPM to get a little bit more output. But uh, yeah, let's figure out what's up first. So I'm just going to wait for the hardware store to open and then we can get started. Well, the verdict is in. With the Itty Bitty Perkins fired up, we attached 
first one, then two, and then three space heaters. One was 1500 watts, the other two were 2000 watts, and as you can see here, we're drawing 21 amps. 21 amps at 230 volts, that's 4800 watts, but mind you, that is with the pedal to the metal. Realistically, we're looking at maybe just, just barely over 4000 watts to not blow the Itty Bitty Perkins to smithereens. That definitely makes this little guy a 102 and not a 402. I am thoroughly pissed and annoyed with myself for not verifying that this was in fact a 402 before starting all of this. But on Perkins' website, at least the photos of the 402 are identical to the photos of the 102, so it didn't even cross my mind. Ignoring the fact that I've now got this ridiculously oversized alternator, what are the consequences of this little mistake? The short version is, it's not great, but on the other hand, the DIY diesel generator does work. Let's say we can get 4,200 watts from the generator. As soon as I turn it on, I also wanna have the charger inverter going to charge the batteries. That's gonna consume roughly 1,500 watts. That leaves me with 2,700 watts. That is enough to run, for instance, the washer or the water maker. Had the Itty Bitty Perkins turned out to be a 402, well then we would probably have gotten somewhere close to 6,500 watts from the generator. That would have meant I could charge the battery, do laundry, and run the electric oven at the same time, or something else in place of the electric oven. Being able to run multiple things off of the generator would have been awesome because that would have meant we could be filling dive bottles while using the water maker while doing laundry and all of that means less time running the generator which would have been awesome. As you saw the DIY diesel generator does work. I'm just a little bit disappointed that it turned out shittier than I had thought because of a stupid mistake. So what am I gonna do? Well to be honest I don't know. The way I see it right now, I can either continue running the Itty Bitty Perkins, uh, well, excuse me, the Itty Bitty Teeny Tiny Perkins, and just adjust to the fact that we've only got a 4000 watt generator, or maybe I could see if I can find a used generator to replace it with, but I don't think that's a great option because there are very few used generators for sale, and the ones I've seen have seemed pretty dodgy. The limited number of used generators and also the wonkiness of the ones that are available was one of the driving forces behind trying the DIY approach. So yeah, I, I don't really know what to do. If you guys have a suggestion, go ahead and leave it as a comment down below. But keep in mind that we're gonna be spending a lot of time in some very cold, dark, and rainy places. So we cannot solely rely on solar or wind. That is just not an option for us, so there's no need to suggest it. Late Friday afternoon, this very long package showed up. That's the stainless steel for the support structure for the diesel tank. Pretty much at the same time, the diesel tank showed up. So uh, let's get this hauled upstairs. <sighs> took the tank out of the cardboard box up in the cockpit because there were a few other uh, doohickeys in there and uh, it was too big to fit in through the companion way. Inside packaging was the tank itself, which is marketed as a universal tank, meaning you can use it for drinking water or diesel or whatever you want. And there was also a hole saw for cutting a hole for this inspection port and also a fuel connection kit. Let's just place the mock-up of the kitchen island over the diesel tank. All of the space in here is what's going to turn into our freezer fridge. Of course, you have to subtract some insulation, about 10 centimeters in the bottom and 10 centimeters in the sides. But yeah, I still think there's a decent amount of volume here. I stopped recording video yesterday just because I needed a little bit of time to mull over the generator situation that was weighing quite heavily on my mind. But uh, while I was doing that, I did do something useful. I mounted the very first piece of deck hardware. That is certainly a milestone worth celebrating. And if we go down below, you can see that it's connected to the galley pole. The galley pole is fully installed and it feels rock solid. So that's good. At least that's something I didn't manage to F up this week. The galley pole is gonna be awesome to have something to grab onto when 
moving around inside of the boat. And most importantly, it's going to transfer the load from the main sheet down to the structural members. I did get some good items checked off of the to-do list this week. I got the remaining four port lights patched up. I got the aft cabin all tidied up and ready for Athena to go back in the water. And we did also get the DIY generator up and running. It was able to power those three space heaters. It just didn't really turn out the way I had hoped. And that sucks because it makes me feel like I didn't really accomplish anything this week. Although I did, like I said, get some good items checked off the to-do list. It's just, it's not a good feeling. Now, in regards to the generator, I think I'm going to stick with the DIY generator and bump up the size of the inverter. I'll call my friendly neighborhood Victron energy dealer tomorrow to see if we can find a good solution. Now, like I said earlier in the video, bumping up the size of the inverter is not magically going to put energy back into my battery bank. So during the cold, dark winters up here in the high latitudes, we are going to have to run the generator a little bit more than we would have had to do if it actually put out the 6.5 or 7 kilowatts. And that sucks, but I think that's what we're going to have to do. And then we'll bump up the solar so we can have maybe five or 600 watts of solar. That should help out during the summer, also up here in the high latitudes, but especially when we make it further south. I'll see if I can figure out the details in this setup for next week's video. Right now, the loose plan is to have two multi plus 3000 inverters. That's going to give us a combined output of roughly 6000 watts. And it'll also provide a little bit of redundancy in case one of them fails, then we still have the other one. Now, if we use the power assist feature and combine the 6000 watts from the inverters and add the 4000 watts roughly from the generator, well, there's nothing we can't really power here aboard Athena. That plan is, of course, very much subject to change. Like I said, I'm gonna call my friendly neighborhood Victor and Energy Pusher tomorrow and see what we can figure out. Also, in next week's video, I hope to get the diesel tank here installed, complete with the frame underneath the cabin sole so we can place the last piece of the cabin sole. I hope you guys have enjoyed this week's installment of Let's Watch Mess Make an Ass Out of Himself by Making a Stupid Mistake. We all make mistakes from time to time. That doesn't mean it's fun, and it's especially not fun to put it on camera, but here we are. I hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena next week for hopefully some smooth sailing. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below, and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you!